Hey guys, Foster here. Just a quick note before we get started today. We are doing something very, very cool in 2020. So this year we are going to do 12 language challenges in 12 months. So on the first day of each month, we will start a new language challenge and each challenge will focus on a specific topic or subject to help you really, really improve your English. For example, we are going to have a challenge about phrasal verbs, a challenge about how to use prepositions, a challenge about how to learn grammar without using textbooks. Anyway, it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun, and we would love to have you participate. So if you are serious about your English, you should really check out these challenges to learn more and start improving your English today. Just visit inglesnuicru.com. Okay, on with the show. Oi, pessoal. Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite. Eu não sei que dia da semana você está escutando a gente. Eu também não sei que dia do ano você vai estar escutando a gente, mas eu queria aqui falar que a promoção do Cambly, de você conseguir fazer uma aula de graça lá com eles, ainda tá valendo. É só colocar o nosso cupom inglês no Icru Podcast. Ah, também tem uma coisa, se você conhecer alguma criança de até 15 anos que esteja super à vontade de fazer aulas online de inglês, também está dando 30 minutos de graça por apenas um real. É só acessar o linkzinho que eu coloquei aqui embaixo nas show notes do episódio para você, tá? Além disso, além dessas aulas que a gente fala aqui todo santo dia para vocês, eles estão também fazendo blog posts, lives semanais, estão fazendo podcasts, e-books, tudo, tudo, tudo que vocês possam imaginar para fazer com que o tempo passe cada vez melhor e mais rápido acompanhado do inglês. Então vai lá, acessem, façam valer a pena o momento de vocês, o tempo de vocês e vamos embora melhorar no inglês juntos, tá bom? Um beijo e agora, now, on with the show! Hey, what's up guys? It is Foster from Inglês no Cru. Welcome to another Ask Me Anything session. This is the part of Sound School where you ask questions, we try to give answers. Sometimes Alexia joins me. And I'm here. Sometimes, no, I'm always here. Uh, more and more nowadays. <laughs> and we are recording from a park where a lot of crazy people are entering right now. Oh, my God. What is that? Uh, it's from university. You can see that that is like a trote. How do I say that? Trote? Yeah. Uh, it's like a fraternity or something, and they're singing. No. I imagine they're going to be singing. Okay, we might hear some interesting things today. Maybe we'll get some on the air. Anyways, we have some questions today. Alexia, give me some questions. Okay, so the first one is from Luciani, and she asks, Is it worth to do a three-month exchange in the USA? Okay, so first of all, hey, Luciani. <laughs> and... The question is, is it worth doing a three-month exchange program in the U.S.? Yes. I imagine she's talking about like a three-month intensive like language and cultural exchange yeah, type thing. I think so. Hmm. Okay. Short answer. Depends. Definitely. Alexia, what do you think about this? I think <laughs> my, my answer to this thing is always like, what are you going to do? With whom you're going to do? Are you going all by yourself and then you're going to find stuff to do there? Or are you going with an agency that you're going to study English for three months? Or are you going to do that work exchange right. thing? So why are you doing? If you have a good answer for that, like I want to get better at my in with my English and I want to practice more. And I'm going to study. Okay, that's fine. So don't go with Brazilians. That's the first point. Yeah. Don't stay in a group of Brazilians. Yeah. So 
This is almost a question of not is it worth it because that question really depends on so many factors, like Alexia was saying. Depends on what you're doing, who you're with, all of those things. So I think we can kind of use this as a question. If you are traveling to the U.S. for three months, what are, what's some good advice? I think, number one, you probably do not want to go with a huge group of Brazilians. If you are surrounded by Portuguese speakers, you know, at least have places where you are not speaking Portuguese all of the time. And preferably, I would recommend not being in a city that has access to a ton of Portuguese speakers. Yeah, because if you go and invest all that money and all that time to stay with Brazilians, what's the point, you know? You don't need to leave Brazil for that. So what I always say, like, I had one month. <laughs> what? It's that teeny uh, little bird, right? No, it's so here. loud. Hi. <laughs> Can I come here? <laughs> so cute. I had one month in the in England, and I went with with a huge group of Brazilians. But I was so lucky that in my classroom, it was only me and another Brazilian, and that's it. So at the time that I was really really studying, I was having uh, an amazing experience with. English and really, really starting to speak English. Yeah. Yeah. I think my biggest advice is if you imagine the stereotypical exchange program, for me, it's like a Brazilian going to New York City or Miami or San Francisco, some big city in the U.S., uh -huh. right? And they're doing this with a lot of other Brazilians. And you will spend a lot of time in classrooms doing some sort of like intensive English type thing where you're with a lot of other students and you probably have the opportunity to actually speak English like 10 minutes a day. I would recommend just doing the opposite of that in every way, shape and form possible. If I could create like the perfect scenario, scenario. Or we could use the reverse situation right now. If I wanted to really improve my Portuguese and I had to travel to Brazil for three months, I would probably choose a small city with almost no Americans or foreigners with a really small, tight community where preferably I was working in Portuguese, like volunteering, working with dogs or on a farm or something <laughs> where people would literally be asking me questions all day but they're being nice to me because I'm working for them and I think that's so much better because you're going to meet real people you're going to get a ton of English practice and exposure and it's going to be way way cheaper yeah I don't know if I would do what Foster is saying like this extreme I think I would be in the middle I would choose a small city but that I could travel to the big city by bus or by subway, for example. Yeah, sure. Anytime. I was just using the radical example yeah. to, to <laughs> prove my point, although that is kind of what I want. <laughs> okay, Luciani, I think that is a long way to say... Yeah, yes, it is, it's, of course. <laughs> it's worth it, but it really depends on your situation. But those are some good things to think about if you do. Thank you for the question, and we will see you guys in the next Ask Me Anything session. Yes, bye! Muito obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio aqui do nosso Inglês de Micro Rádio. Quando eu falo nosso, eu realmente quero dizer eu, Foster e vocês, né? A gente faz isso tudo pensando em vocês. E, além disso, nós temos produtos feitos para vocês lá no nosso site, inglêsdenecro.com. E lá você vai poder ver os challenges... Né? Nós temos um challenge novo a cada mês. Quando que Sound School vai abrir de novo? O que, que nós estamos planejando para esse mês? Tudo isso você pode acessar lá na inglesnecru.com. Vale muito a pena. Nós temos muito orgulho do novo site. Tudo está funcionando direitinho. Então, vá lá, deixa seu e-mail para você saber as nossas novidades. O que, que a gente está criando desse lado. Então, é isso. Dei meu recadinho de final de episódio. Espero te ver no próximo. 
Então é isso, hein? Bye!